Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pink Shade. It's Thursday. That means it's time for Pop and Bravo. And I have, I would say, one of the foremost uh, Bravo experts of our time. It's Ronnie Karam of Watch What Happens. Well, hello. Watch What Crappens. I said it wrong. I'll Watch take what... it. Okay. Yeah, Ronnie Karam. He's the, he's the producer of Watch What Happens. Yes. Of the boss of everything. Hi. How are you? How are you doing? Good. What's going on with you? Um, it's good to see your face. It's good to see you in your new space there that you've been working on. Oh, thank you. Nice to be here. Nice to see you in your new space that you're in your basement. Jesus. We live basement. in such different worlds. You're just casually like, this is my basement. That looks like a freaking mansion living room. To me. <laughs> like, that's crazy that you're just casually like, oh, it's just my extra space. <laughs> Well, <laughs> whatever. Listen, I got a family of four. You know, my son just told us that over Christmas time, he's going to bring home like four or five friends. I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> Where they're going to go. <laughs> Guess they'll all be down here. Because, You're going to have a stinky basement. You know, uh, with a with a teenage boy. Yeah. I Oh, my God. You guys talk so much on your podcast. Watch what crap and it's not happens about the teenage boys and their hair. Yeah. Oh my God! It's I still there. Some... Why yeah. won't it, Why won't they get rid of it? I mean, when do when do fat? How long do fad last? How long do fad last now? I, aren't fads supposed to be quick? They should be over that mushroom hair bullshit. I can't take it. And there's so many cute boys who are just ruining all of the photos for their future because they're never going to want to show those. I agree. They're going to be mortified in about one year, and they just walk around with that stupid fucking hair. I know. I agree. There's this meme going around. If you haven't seen it, I'll send it to you, which is like some sort of animal is foraging around in the forest. It's like a, like a sheep or something. And it lifts its head up and it's been digging around in some hay and the hay is all over its head. And it says like every teenage boy, you know, it's like, yeah, yes, pretty yes. much, <laughs> pretty much. But they like permit. What's oh, no, crazy no. is I've seen one. I know one. I know one of them in the wild, one of these teenage boys. Yes. Uh -huh. They curl their hair and then they comb it forward and then they like flip it up. They they have there's like a whole process. Like it's a really difficult thing. It's not just combing it forward. I mean, they perm it and then they comb it. I mean, they're, it's a lot of dedication looks stupid. Okay. I agree. And my son does have one friend that fully got his hair permed. And we were like, and then it was like in a mullet, but permed. I was like, that didn't look but good hey. when it was in style and it doesn't look good now. Yeah. But hey, you know, be bold. You're young kids. Okay. I know. My son doesn't even brush his hair. He told me that the other day. He goes, I don't even own a brush. I go, well, you do own a brush. What are you talking about? He goes, I don't know. I guess I lost it. I was like. Yeah. I a boy. You do whatever you want. This is your world now, kid. You I take over you. from here. He's in college. He's living his best life. Now, okay, Ronnie, we have a lot of shows to cover because right now, would you say this is the best time in Bravo or the worst? Because we've got so many shows. We've got a lot. We went through a drought, right? There was a long mm. time where we didn't have much and that hurt. That really hurt my feelings. <laughs> and it also, hurt, it also hurt your business. <laughs> yeah, but we've got stuff back, but it's like New York. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to be positive with New York because generally, like, I like the people on it. I, I, in favor of a reboot this is just like there's only so much you can try to root for, <laughs> for something um it's they're just they don't i feel like bravo's just not listening to the people listen to the people okay? yeah i agree with that I agree um with but that. yes i'm it's still even that i was cracking up last night watching that stupid episode and it was probably one of the worst of all time but i was still you know there were parts <laughs> where i really liked it i was like print dress is so cute for you know such a cartoon villain and i mean there's still stuff i like for sure um, but we we need kind of a, a show that's going to take the reins. And I feel like right now, nothing's really doing that. Yeah, I agree. It's like we've got four shows. And if you would have asked me last week, I would have said, oh, it's Salt Lake. Salt Lake is killing it. It's it's firing on all. We've got Mary. She's a delight. And then this week, I'm like, meh. I don't think I would say that this week. Well, we're so fickle as Bravo fans, you know, one minute it's like, I mean, look at Vanderpump rules. One second we're like, this is the most amazing show ever. And then the next year we were like, this is trash. Just, I mean, two episodes into the season, the whole fandom was like, fuck this show. This show sucks. They're all <laughs> over the hill idiots, you know? So it's just, you got to keep it good every time. I think Salt Lake City is good. I think that's the best right now. I think it's so funny and so good, but the audience is not watching it. They're like, bye. They're not... <laughs> You're not watching it. The ratings aren't that much more than New York, which is crazy. Oh, I New didn't York know is that. Really tanking. 
Yeah. So it's not looking good. And for someone who loves Bravo and talks about it every day, you know, I get worried. I go through yeah. periods where I'm like, what is happening? What am I going to do now? I can't wait tables again. You all better figure something out. <laughs> you know, I start feeling desperate. Like I'm going to go down to those offices. Like oh, everybody get in here, you know? <laughs> I, you know, yeah, I agree with all that. I think that, you know, our, our, our friend Kate has said many times, like, it's just, it's just a matter of time for all the housewives are over. And I'm like, stop saying that. That hurts my feelings. Yeah, I don't like that either. And I, you know, it's like that with everything, but it has been 20 years. And I'm not saying like, oh, they're over because they go in cycles and sometimes they're great. And sometimes they're like me. But I think, um, you know, I think I think it'll be fine. But I think right now it's just like it's, it's enjoyable. You know, I'm just plugging along enjoying everything i'm wishing they would just shut up about jersey and bring it back because i love that mm -hmm. and i can't wait to see kyle's stupid journey and getting torn <laughs> down on beverly hills next week i guess it starts yeah next week next week yeah. you guys we record uh this on wednesdays so this week to talk about new episodes we only have potomac in new york um because it's only wednesday so we haven't gotten salt like an oc yet and um but we're blessed with the four shows. So even though two are new for this episode, we will, we will, uh, we will persevere. So, all right, I want to, let's talk about OC. So what we've seen at this point is the first part of the reunion. So we have one couch. We have Katie, Gina, Jen Pedranti, other couch, Emily, Tamara, Heather. Evil couch. Well, I mean, that is just a rancid couch. That the earth should just open up and swallow that side of the couch. And Heather Dubrow with her villainous ass and her those pictures circulating of her that are just stills from the reunion. They're not touched up or anything, but just with her frown and her her head's pulled back and her veins are popping out. She's just like killed all the puppies. You know, she's just that horrid, horrid Disney villain. And I'm actually glad that she's kind of leaning into that because. I think everybody really fell for her. I'm a good person now. I'm a human with a heart. Hear it beat. <laughs> bump, 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 bump. And uh, I never bought that shit. So I'm really glad that she's back to just being a, an emotional terrorist, you know? Do you have thoughts on Terry's nose job? At some point, it's just like trying to put, you know, biscuits back in the can. <laughs> Not to not to sound like me putting on jeans, but at some point, there's just only so much you could do. You know, you put a finger in one hole to plug that leak, and then another hole pops up, and before you know it, Donald Duck is drowning in the boat. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, I don't see any difference in his nose. You know, I don't either. I don't really look at Terry Dubrow for his <laughs> for his nose. You know, no, you shouldn't. No. I think at some point you should just be like, I'm old. I mean, I get like, listen, I'm Botox and I chemical peel and I do the whole thing and I'm saving up to get my waddle done, you know, so yeah. I'm not like being some judgy asshole about surgery to it. But I think at some point you just need to be like, like, look, I'm going to get my waddle. Okay. I want mm -hmm. that gone, but yeah. there's not, I'm not going to do this whole thing. There's only so much you can do. You know what I mean? I hear you. I currently am suffering with two Botox bruises on my face that I've covered heavily with makeup. Oh, really? Um, Would they miss the spot? Those bastards. You should sue them. No. When, sometimes they, but I don't know. I'm like sensitive and old. And sometimes they hit something and it makes a bruise. And I have two bruises by my eye and a bruise on my chin. And I, my husband was like, what's happening with your face? And I said, oh, I got Botox. And I got a bruise. He goes, I don't want you to change your face. I want to, I go. The face that you know has been getting Botox for <laughs> 20 years. Like, what are you talking about? He all of a sudden like realizes that like he thinks I'm changing my face. I go, it's literally I do this every six months. He's like, I'm oh. not changing my face. Mother Nature is changing my face, you fuck. Okay. I'm if you have any complaints, it, call her. I'm trying to put it back where it was. I'm trying to put yeah. it back where it was. <laughs> um, God. So, God, that's a great segue for OC. Yeah. So oh yeah those faces that's the, see that's what i mean it's too much you guys like tamra only her the bottom of her chin moves in this yeah. whole thing she's like a claymation that's bro it's like going to chuck e cheese and one of the one of the characters is like broken it's like one twitchy eye and a, and a <laughs> jaw come on man every time i think of tamra and i think of you guys i just think about you guys saying that she was like a raccoon on the top of a dumpster what was it oh a possum said? on a trash possum. Mm -hmm. yeah because uh the first time i ever saw a possum was uh it was raining and i was a little stoned i was in my 20s and i went to take out the trash i had never seen one and this little hairless thing just started screaming it like 
you know, <laughs> screaming at me. Yeah. I dropped that trash and ran back in and was like Googling aliens and shit. I was like, what was that thing? It yeah, took, yeah. It took a few times telling people before they were like, that's a possum, you idiot. But <laughs> it's terrifying. And that that came from that moment where Tamara was screaming, that's my opinion. I was like, okay, well, I remember you. And there is probably still trash all over that floor in Long Beach. Oh, my God. I do think, I don't know. You know, sometimes you hear things on podcasts, you know, from your favorite podcast. It just sticks with you forever, forever. And that is one of these things that every time I see Tamara do a little, mm, like a little squinch down with her eyes, I'm like, oh, my God, they're right. They're right. And she's a beautiful lady. It's just that sometimes it's when she gets angry. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> she does get a little, a little rat like. Um, so let's talk about the Katie, Gina, Jim Padronti couch. Okay. So first of all, I love Gina. I'm unapologetically here for Gina. I love well. her. <laughs> I knew you'd have a thought. Um, Jim Padronti. Yeah, she's nice, super nice, but she's dumb as a box of rocks. I, yeah. I, I, to sit there and literally say like your boyfriend's name and FBI investigation and money laundering and bookie and gambling illegal. And you're like, I, I mean, it's fine though. Everything's fine. You're like, you, you just said <laughs> everybody's boyfriend. I mean, so what the, the FBI, everybody's boyfriend has to deal with the FBI. I mean, he was helping the FBI and they're like, well, but he has immunity. That means he was helping. He was turning evidence. No, it doesn't. They just, they said, we'll give you immunity if you give us a computer. I mean, that's all it was guys. Come yeah. on. It's like, that's what they're saying. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, good for her. I mean, I think delusion's a little bit healthy. You know, I think the worst thing to ever happen to a relationship is knowing more about your partner. I mean, that's just the worst part. That's the second I'm out of there. You know what I mean? Like when you really get to know somebody, like when you're driving in the car and you finally see their personality when they're like, you motherfucker, like at some random 16 year old and you're like, whoa, I, gross you're like a living breathing human being with anger you're done bye get out of my yeah, car yeah yeah well i i they are going to get married and um she probably like won't get a prenup and then they'll get divorced in three years and he'll take all her sweet sweet um bravo money well california i don't think works like that oh california if you're together for a certain she'll get something anyway i mean unless she's unless she signs Unless he makes her sign some kind of a prenup or something. But is that what you're there, saying? That she yeah. will sign a prenup? Yeah. I know. I'm saying he probably won't want one because he'll try to figure out a way to get her money. Because I feel like. I don't think his, she has any. Well, I don't she, think he does either. That's my whole thing is like, how are those. This is America. Do any of us have any money? Here's what we've got. Credit okay. and a prayer. Okay. <laughs> we all fucking know it. America itself is in like 50 zillion, kabillion, trillion dollars in debt. We don't give a shit. We're just waiting for the walls to crumble down. And when they do, we'll have all the shit we bought off Amazon to snuggle with. Okay. You can't take that away from me. Yeah. Ronnie and I just had a full 10 minute conversation about Amazon and how I encouraged him <laughs> to get an Amazon credit card. <laughs> because Jeff Bezos is not the greatest guy, but I can't help it. I love his products. Well, you know what? Look, I'm just saying, like, nobody really has money. It's all a house of cards. So, okay. especially on Housewives. I mean, I don't know. I forgive people for that because these shows, nobody has money. And then when they really do, are they really happy? Like that Bronwyn on Salt Lake City. I don't believe for two seconds that lady is happy. She looks miserable as hell. And everyone's like, oh my God, mother icon, which is great. I think she's a great addition, but she just looks so sad at all times like she has no fun in her she's just a sad sad lady so i don't think being rich necessarily helps is heather happy heather ain't no, happy no 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 you know who is happy gina i think gina's happy and she's the poorest of them all gina is happy yes because you know she's happy with simple things she wants a gather sign and she wants you know tupperware with different kinds of lids that she just keeps buying at the fucking home but you know when you buy off-brand tupperware and then you've got all this stuff that doesn't match. <laughs> I feel like that's Gina's whole house. Yeah. That's Gina's life. You know, and like just once a year you go away. through that cabinet and you go, why did I buy this? This doesn't match. This is giving me plastic yeah. cancer poisoning in the microwave. I got to throw all this away. And yeah. then you start over with glass and then you realize that's taking up a lot of space. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really heavy. Yeah. Plastics mm. for the win. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, I just want to tell you guys, um, our friends over at Bravo docket just put out an episode today about the Travis and Gina situation and it's all about Travis's um, divorce. And boy, oh boy, I've only listened to half of it. But Oh, I will be listening to that. But his yeah, ex-wife is girls. really something. 
Yeah, well, he doesn't sound like the biggest prince either, so it'll be interesting to see what's going on. There's always two sides to every I know, so story. Far, so far, he comes across better, but... Um, well, that's like my Mima said, no woman ever made herself crazy, honey. <laughs> well, your Mima's smart. She was smart. Smart. <laughs> um, how? What did you feel about the sort of uh, planned takedown of Katie on this uh, first gross. episode? I thought it was really, really gross. And it's all because someone dared say that Heather called the paps. When meanwhile, they all said it last year and she didn't do that. She didn't go scorched earth, but it's Katie and Katie said it. Granted, that wasn't a great moment from Katie either. Yeah. But just like going to that level and being like, I'm going to bring up something from 10 years ago and try and ruin your, like ruin you as a mother. Like what happened to my children or my children? You can't talk about my children. That's the biggest defense, especially with Tamara. I mean, Tamara just did it a few weeks ago. We're just like, Vicky. <laughs> Vicky, you win, Vicky. Talking about my children and me as a mother. But that's okay. This is okay to come drag someone and basically say you lost custody of your children when she was probably in an abusive situation. All this, it's a vile. It's disgusting. Those two are disgusting. Heather and Tamara, vile, vile. Emily, those three, vile human beings. Gross. I didn't enjoy Emily's reunion look. I didn't. I think I'll think the hair Emily's pulled up sharply. Emily's not ever there for a look. Emily is one of the most stereotypical OC, you know, cut out, big fake gold, big fake marble chains she was wearing earlier this year. Remember, like her dress, she had two parts of a dress, and they were being held together by plastic fake marble chains. I mean, that yep. that lady is tacky as hell, and. <laughs> You know, she's done so much to herself. And after that reunion, I was literally screaming at the TV to the point where I was worried that I was going to get the police called on me. <laughs> that woman got the face that she deserved after all that. Karma came down and went into that scalpel because she deserves it. She deserves it. What a monster. Yeah, it's uh, I didn't enjoy any of that. I didn't enjoy that, you know, kind of she did pound on Jen a little bit about like, you don't get immunity if you know, but I mean, this is not like lawyer information. This is just common sense. Like, you know, we, we all watch true crime, but the takedown of Katie, I think that yes, it, it would have been good for Katie to be able to like say, Oh yeah, that did happen. And here's my side that there was this road rage guy, blah, blah, blah. But then they're like, mm, the police report said you were in his driveway. She's like, I, I pulled over. I don't think I was in his driveway. Like I didn't know him. And then the whole, like she got paper served, but she didn't live at the house because she was literally in like a domestic abuse shelter. Like, well, she didn't say that, but that's kind of what they're hinting. Right. She said like an yeah. institution or something like that. Yeah. They didn't say that, but I mean it, she has told the story lightly that she was in a domestic abuse situation with her first husband and that one of the kids did choose to stay there and, it's very messy and it's got to be very painful to talk about your kids and losing custody of your kids. I mean, it was bad. It, it was, was bad. bad. It's just so low. And, you know, Katie, I think, was caught in some lies. I mean, that police report does. Yeah. She did follow the guy. But I think what she was saying, and I'm kind of being an apologist here just because she got, I feel like she was the victim in this in this, uh, in this situation. situation yeah. Right. But, you know, and that, from what I've read, she did follow the guy home. But I think what she was saying was, I did, I, I'm sorry for that noise. That's horrible i don't know if they're doing dentistry right now down there right no do you'll hear um, it from upstairs in my house too you guys were both living in ramshackle homes where people are drilling so yes it's okay did you just yeah. yell at them yeah, so it's not going to work. No, um, they're going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> so embarrassing. What are they doing? Okay. But yeah, she did lie in that situation. But I think what she was saying was, yeah, I mean, I followed him, but I didn't know it was to his house. Right. You know, like I didn't know him. So how would I know where he lived? But they're saying like you did, you followed him up. But my thing is, why are we making this man such a victim? He's screaming at a woman with a, with children in her car and yeah. videotaping her and doing all this shit. Nobody sounds innocent in that situation. Right. And they both sound like they were kind of drama queens. She called the police and yeah. he was trying to make it like she was falsely imprisoning him and all this. You know, they're both kind of drama queens. But the point is, it's none of these ladies' business. And if you bring up anything five minutes ago, they're like, how dare you use my past against me or my <laughs> children? But then they're allowed to do this. It's disgusting. And Heather's whole thing of like, don't dig anything up. Don't dig anything. I just, I hope this reunion, we don't stoop to that level. Yet she's got all these receipts that even the Bravo docket was like, we couldn't find these easily. It took major digging to get these. So yeah. whoever, whoever got all of this information really made an effort. You know, Heather, 
and your yeah. stupid private eyes and Emily with your stupid fake, you know, oh, lawyer, get out of here. <laughs> and I'm not saying she's not a lawyer, but all that stuff was readable in the U.S. Weekly. And it's none of your goddamn business. Y'all, it's the season to be thankful. And sometimes you have to dig deep. And I mean deep to find things to be thankful for. But this year, I'm thankful for Honey Love Bras because there's nothing worse than suffering through a Thanksgiving dinner with an uncomfortable bra or really just in your everyday life. Sometimes I watch our reality shows and I want to send some of our gals a Honey Love Bra. You know, I'm looking at you directly, Zaria. But y'all know Honey Loves Bras feature that supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing lift. Plus, they're super soft. I mean, you don't want to take it off. It's a around the house bra. It's a sleeping bra. They're just so comfortable. You guys, my mom is 83 and she just recently told me she ordered a Honey Love bra. And I can't wait to hear how much she loves it. She's going to love it. And she used my code, of course. Don't forget about their shapewear. It's holiday party season. You guys, we all have an outfit we need to fit into, look great, whether it's like pants or a dress. Their shapewear uses targeted compression technology so you no longer feel like you're suffocating or that your life is being squeezed out of you. For me personally, I like their V-neck bra. And I also love the super power short for smoothing out those love handles, you know, under that dress. And so it doesn't roll down when you sit down. Also, that is the worst. You're at a party, you sit down, the thing rolls down, you got to get up, you got to go to the bathroom, you got to fix it, and then you got to readjust your boobs and everything. When you're wearing Honey Love, you don't have any of these problems, okay? Give the gift of comfort this holiday season, whether you're attending a wedding, hosting a big Thanksgiving dinner, or going to a holiday party, or simply seeking that everyday boost of confidence. Honey Love can be your perfect plus one. So get yourself or someone you love the gift of comfort. Plus for November only, listen to this. Honey Love is giving up to 50% off site-wide. Visit honeylove.com forward slash pink shade and shop their sale. And when you go to check out, it'll say, where did you hear about us? And please say pink shade sent me. Thanks. No. Okay. So the thing about the, um, the Katie and the lying, I agree. I think she was caught in a couple of lies and I think that they could have based their air quote, takedown on the lies, but not on the kids. Because God forbid, if you ever mentioned one of Heather Dubrow's kids, like, hey, remember 10 years ago when your kids were in the car and blah, 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 she would be like, don't bring up my children. They were only three, four, and seven. How dare you? Yeah, of you course. Know? Yeah. And that's why she specified, are we talking about Katie's 19 year old child so that she could have like carte blanche to say whatever she wanted to, to go after this chick? <laughs> you know? I don't, I don't like that 19 year old child being on the show though. We're like, we don't know you. You haven't earned the right to be on our screen. You know, you're no Gia, you're no Brielle. Get out of here. Well, they need her at this point. Cause she's got great you know, she's got like a huge following. I think she's, a, she's got like 500,000 followers or something. She's like, like an influencer. I mean, I don't know. I just read that in the comments somewhere. So I'm sure it's true, but they're probably <laughs> like, show her so we can get some of that, some of those clicks onto here, you know? Yeah. And also it's like the younger audience or mm -hmm. whatnot. Yeah. Cause this Katie's reminding us constantly how young she is. Um, so Tamra, you know, we were kind of waiting for the reunion with Tamra to see how that would go for her. Cause she was so awful all season to Shannon, you know, Oh, Shannon, I forgot. Shannon was over on the Katie, Jenna, Gina, Jen couch. How did I forget about Shannon? We kind of forgot about, um, we kind of forgot about the whole Tamara was awful to Shannon for like a minute, but then it came back. And I have to tell you that I was very, I hated how Tamara treated Shannon all season. You know, my husband's a recovering alcoholic and I can tell you right now, just telling somebody they're an alcoholic and that they need to stop drinking is never going to work. And doing it on camera is actually also pretty terrible. So, well, especially when you're clearly an alcoholic yourself. I mean, if those right. are the rules, then how are you not an alcoholic? You're the one getting drunk every episode and screaming at somebody and, and showing your an tits asshole. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and pissing on the ground in multiple episodes and then turning around and saying, you're so embarrassing because you're drunk in public. Like, hello, lady. You know, yeah. look at yeah. the mirror. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And I, I, I'd kind of forgotten about it. And then we bring it back up. Now, Tamara did have a good point, and that pains me to say, but she did have a good point when she goes, we've talked about this for 10 years on every reunion. And when they did that pop up, I mean, they skipped a couple of years. They were just like, we don't have enough space on the screen. That was, that was rough. 
That was yeah, but Shannon also had a good point when she's like, we've talked about it for 10 years because you brought it up for 10 years. I mean, Shannon's first season, don't forget, was when Heather and Tamara tried to gaslight her into <laughs> when they were like, well, should we call someone? She's really losing it. She's having a mental break. We need to call trying to get her 5150 or whatever that is, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, those fuckers. So they've been trying this, you know, and Heather's always had a thing against Shannon because they had that like Shannon's house is bigger. Remember when Shannon was like richer at the time than Heather. Ooh, and that was ooh. a huge bone of contention with both of them. Shannon was shitty to Heather. Heather was shitty to Shannon because they were like having the battle for who's the richest in this group, you know, and Heather's just like kept it going. I mean, it's all these years later and Heather will still find any excuse she can to go at her, you know, and at this point, it doesn't even make sense. I mean, I don't even care if Shannon's an alcoholic. It's not, it's how they deal with it. Of course, they have a point. We all see Shannon. Right. But you don't get to do that to somebody else. And if your whole point is Shannon calls me sobbing every night, your point shouldn't be you bitch for calling me sobbing every night. It should be like, Shannon, we need to get you help because this is beyond me. Like, have some yeah. sensitivity. But like turning against her and then turning everyone against her and being like that stupid alcoholic. She doesn't even care about Eddie's AFib. Fuck off. <laughs> Eddie's AFib. That was the thing. She never even called me about Eddie's AFib, bitch. Like, oh, God. You are so ridiculous. That should be the name of Eddie's podcast. Eddie's AFib. <laughs> Eddie's AFib. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, you know, now that Teddy and Edwin are getting a divorce, are they still going to have the two E's in a pod or whatever the fuck their podcast is, the two husbands. Oh, the two... they were gonna do that? No, they have one. They have a, a Ed and Eddie or Ed. Oh, they God. have a two E's in the. They have a podcast together. Those that's, two. That's something I don't think anybody needs to listen to. No. With some base model bullshit. I don't know who's <laughs> listening to that. Base model. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh my God. All right. Let's talk about um a go last... teddy, right? The rumor is she was banging her horse trainer and then the wife found out and threw her around the stables and stuff. Girl, that's the best thing Teddy's ever done. I, I was like, wait it. a minute, am I interested in a teddy story? How the age did this happen? I didn't hear about the dead wife got like beat her up. Or try to? Yes. Uh, well, some of this is coming from Kelly Dodd, and some of this oh, is Oh, Jesus from, Christ. Uh, she said it on one of her. <laughs> Go, oh, 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 slut! Uh, something. And uh, some, you know, this is all cobbled together from rumors I'm reading. But Okay, the, let's hear it. She was banging the horse trainer. Yes, I heard that. The trainer's wife found out and, like, I guess beat her up in the horse stable or there was some kind of physical altercation. I don't know. I just, I, I found out from the most evil housewife of all time. So, so, Medea, darling. I, I don't know anything else. Um, do you want to, do you want to dip into the, uh, Kelly Dodd of it all? The shit that she pulled yesterday. You are a pig and you hate Mexicans and you hate women too. Oh my God. Listen, yeah, I, saw that. I was listening yesterday morning to radio Andy. And so, I was listening because, you know, I love John Hill. I love him. I mean, I love Andy too, obviously. I mean, our Lord and Savior, you have to. And I was listening and I call, I believe if I, I was, you know, I was walking the dogs, half listening. And a caller called in and said, you know, what do you think about this, you know, Kelly Dodd's rant or whatever political rant? And Andy goes, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. I don't know. And um, so John goes on this thing about like, yeah, you know. She well, didn't calls she people, say Andy was a communist or something? She, she called Andy a sissy. A sissy and a communist or something. She called John Hill a communist. And so that's what she, and, and John Hill goes, I think she just says communist. I don't think she has any idea what it means. I think that's just like a word she throws out. He goes, I don't care. She's a fat, disgusting pig. Who gives a fuck? And Andy laughed and goes, yeah. well, she's not fat. Like she is a disgusting pig, but she's not fat. You got the rest of it right, but yeah. It was kind of funny. And Andy didn't try to stop him from saying what he wanted to say. I texted John yesterday and I was like, oh, my God, you know, did you see the clip of her going off on you and reaffirming that you're a communist and that you hate Latinos and you and Andy both hate women? And I was like, even though Andy only produces shows about women. And then the funniest thing was she goes, and it wasn't even me that called Andy a sissy. It was my mother. And then she flips the camera and her mom's in the back seat. I did it. I did call him a sissy. You know why? Because that's how I think that's the only thing I call him. So that's right. I'm Kelly's mom back here. And let me tell you, he is sissy. So there. I said it. I said it. And Kelly just pushes her out of the car. We see her just rolling behind the right. 
She's like, oh. she's like, once again, you're punished Psh, down the stairs. So yeah, John was like, I don't give two flying shits. I don't care. She's called me a communist enough times and I've had it. And I was like, mm. okay. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, it was, you just wait to see what Kelly's going to do in response, you know, because I'd heard about that in the day and everybody's like, oh my God, what's Kelly's response going to be? So of course Kelly comes on in a pearl necklace, which I don't know why I found that so funny, but she's wearing like these giant pearls. I was like, okay, yeah. first lady. And Rick was like, <laughs> how dare you come for my wife? And the most disgusting things that have ever been said about women. And then she's going off, you hate Mexicans. She's like, my mom, her name is Garcia. <laughs> and mom's in the backseat like, hi, Kelly, from the backseat. It was crazy. It was crazy. I love that. It crazy. really was. That was crazy. some mess. That was some mess. That was interesting, though. That was that was a little excitement for my I mean, afternoon. Obviously, you shouldn't call someone a fat pig, right? But listen, I'm not. Obviously. I'm someone that it gets so angry that I will be like, you pig! You know, meaning like you, you asshole of a human being. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you're disgusting. Yeah, but you can't say, yeah, you can't say that. <laughs> yeah, well. He's doubling down. He don't care. Um, okay. Zero fucks. Zero fucks. I think, you know, once you get called communist three, four times, you're just about done. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? That whole side, our whole side is, com our, that whole political side, our, my whole political side, we're all just communists now. Before it was liberals and before it, no, first it was liberals during the Clinton and then it was socialists during mm -hmm. Obama and mm -hmm. now it's communists. Like, we don't care. Just keep coming up with something every eight, eight years, like some new, some new villainous word you can call everybody. Yeah. You know, I'm just a female voter. That's what I am. Okay. Well, good luck. Good luck <laughs> in this country, honey. You're going to need it. Tits. Good luck to me and good luck to my daughter. Um, yeah. All right. Let's chat about things that aren't funny, but we laugh anyway. We have to laugh because why not? Um, Roni. Okay, let me tell you, speaking of something that's not funny, and Andy said this last night um, on the, Watch What Happens Live. So it was Jeff Lewis and Cy were on there. And the episode ended and they were like, oh, how did you feel about, you know, that Rebecca Minkoff thing was a prank? And Andy goes, I don't like pranks. Like he just was dead. Like, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like pranks. And I don't yeah, like and that's really either. rare. That's really rare for Andy to just break from the butt kissing, right? Because he's the, you know, he's the car salesman. So everything yeah. at the beginning of every season, Andy's like, this is the most amazing season of Atlanta you've ever seen. And then, you know, yeah. it has to be shut down for a retooling because it was so bad. You're right. Um, so, you know, it's hard to trust him on stuff like that. So when even Andy is like, that sucks. Like, what are you guys doing over there? <laughs> Yeah. Andy was just basically like, I'm trying here, but you're making it very difficult. You're yeah. killing everything. You know what I mean? Because if you have four franchises on at one time and people are not going to, most people are not watching four housewives. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they're not going to watch Salt Lake City first because that's weird to them because it's Mormon and it's one of the newer ones. Mm -hmm. So they're going to watch kind of the old standbys. They're going to watch Potomac because it has the biggest ratings and they're going to watch, you know, OC. And then probably they're going to want to watch New York. And if, they suck. If New York sucks, people are going to be like, well, Housewives is over, you know, mm -hmm. and New York sucks. It's just to the point where they just don't care. Like, what even was that? A prank like that? And then the other half was Bryn just lying about shit again just for fun. I mean, it's yeah. not even funny, you know? And she's like, I stare the pot like a little baby. <laughs> oh, my arm hurts from staring the pot. You are so sad. You are so sad. Do something. Get alive. Date somebody. Like, get off your couch. I, nuts. I enjoyed Bryn the first season because I was like, all right, she's given a little like kooky Sonia Morgan horny vibes. Okay. Like, you know, okay. But now I'm just like, ooh. And last night they even said on Watch What Happens Live. I mean, Jeff was saying that he doesn't like the the gay baiting basically that she does with Jenna Lyons. And he goes, and I also think it's really disrespectful because Jenna, you know, is engaged and it's disrespectful to her partner that Bryn is constantly just like kiss me and rubbing all over her. And he was like, this is like a man and a woman. Like it's really inappropriate. And I have to agree. And her whole thing of like flirting with Aaron's dad and Aaron being like, Ooh, get away from my dad. Like it's, I don't think it's funny anymore. I think it's funny if, if it's a dabble here and there, it's funny. But to make it your whole personality is wearing me out. The stuff like that, I mean, I just take it like a sitcom character. And I'm like, okay, that's her shtick. And I think she does her shtick pretty well. Like, I don't 
I'm not like clutching my pearls over it or anything. I think what bothers me about it is that she's a hypocrite about it because she acts like that. And her whole thing is like, I'm a sexy baby who <laughs> dates billionaires. And I learned how to play chess because rich guys like it. <laughs> I collect rare books because rich guys like it. I mean, that's like her whole vibe. But then when you say, oh, she is she a sugar baby? She's like, how dare you speak to a woman like this? It's like, you can't have it both ways. Like, give me a break. It's not crazy that people would speculate speculate it. You're literally playing a sex kitten character and talking yeah. about dating only billionaires. So why would it be so crazy for someone to be like, are you a sex kitten who only dates billionaires? And it's like the most offensive thing. And she can't take it. And anybody saying anything on a podcast, even alluding to that, is just ridiculous. I've got a team of 50 people working under me. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, Nobody you don't. believes a thing you say because you're a chronic ass liar, okay? And I think she has the base of being really good. I think she's funny. She's charismatic. She's beautiful. She's, she's got beautiful. such good style. Yes. She's pretty funny. She's just the lies. I think it's the lies and the hypocrisy. It's like, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired okay. of that. Uh, that part of her personality is wearing me out. It, I think she was more interesting when she was telling us about her backstory and how she grew up and, you know, being biracial and her grandmother taking it or get her hair done every weekend and her brother. And I think all that was interesting about her, but then it's sort of like she can't go now she's done it. Now she can't tell us anything else. And now she's got to kind of lean into this sex kitten thing. And I think she's trying like so hard to prove like I do have a job and I do have money. I don't know why anybody ever would think that I didn't. Well, last season we saw you do literally nothing. Never mentioned you had a job. So that's what we got that. Well, I think that that's, they wouldn't let her film or, I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going on. And I don't think we've ever like followed all of the housewives at work or anything like that. I just think she's giving, she's not giving enough and she's trying to drive the show and it's in a really bad direction to where she's blocking everybody from making any real friendships because mm. the minute she sees a friendship starting she says something horrible that somebody said about each other and it's all lies and they're finally after two years realizing that she's just a compulsive liar and so they don't listen to her like last night the way that jessel just took care of that immediately with jenna and yeah. i was like i believe jenna obviously this girl's just lying at this point yeah. And it's just sad. It's like it's killing the show, you know, not the and the show's already half dead. It's like killing a zombie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, The show's not that alive anyway, but she's really just hurting any chance that the show has to progress. Well, let's go back to this prank. So this prank is she tells Bryn, who she knows will tell everybody that Rebecca Minkoff is a, a sex craved lunatic and has sex with random people and her husband doesn't care. And she got pregnant with another man's baby and her husband's fine with it. Now, everybody believes it. I believed it. I believed it. I was like, whoa, I OK. Yeah. I, yeah. I fell for the prank. Yeah. I, I didn't have any spoilers to tell me it wasn't true. And I was just like. First, I was like, okay, what we're doing here is the next week, Aaron's going to be like, actually, it's a joke. I wanted to tell you guys that I'm pregnant because her pregnancy news just came out. But then the timeline what doesn't add up for that. Right. Well, I was really pissed at first because I was like, who does this? This isn't a storyline. This is disgusting. You can't drag somebody like this on TV. And like, yeah. she has children. Like, you can't be like, she got... She just got railed by 20 guys and then had a, like, who does that? That's disgusting. Fuck Aaron for doing that. Yeah. And also Aaron trying to prove that Bryn is the, the, uh, the gossip and the liar when she immediately sat down at that lunch with Rebecca and was like, oh my God, here's what Bryn said about you. Like, you're the worst. You're just as bad. You're just, you're Bryn in a different font, slightly different, you know, mm -hmm. much more boring. Like, but, um. <laughs> You're the same thing, so I don't know what you're trying to prove, lady, because you just yeah. you just carried the news the same way that you're accusing her of doing. But then I was just grossed out. I was like, this is not cool to do with this lady. And out there ruining this lady's reputation. And I shouldn't be on her side. She's a fucking Scientologist. Like, I don't want to fight for her. Mm -hmm. And then they have me kind of sticking up for her. And then just the way they all dealt with it so ham-handedly. And it really went to show that even if something was going off on this show, this cast can't handle it. They were terrible. They every single one of them fumbled that ball. Not a single one of them did an entertaining job with that ball. You know, I, yeah. And the way they ended the show with them walking out, like, "Good job, they bought it." I was like, "Ooh, ooh!" And I liked that we rolled right into watch what happens live. They didn't put any filler in the middle. We rolled right into it, and immediately the first thing they're like, "We didn't like it. We yeah. didn't like it. Didn't yeah. didn't land like you thought it would." No. 
Well, they just did the roach gag. Like, haha, we're going to put roaches in people's food. It's just, I don't know. That show just needs to just cut it. Just cut the whole thing. I mean, just make it Real Housewives of, I don't care, Brooklyn. Or Real Housewives of the Upper West Side or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just go back to finding crazy people, crazy older ladies that you can shoot. Cut this influencer bullshit out. They're not going to show anything. None of the ladies show anything. It's ridiculous. Like, wow, now we get to watch a scene of Size Kid getting a free purse from the Wicked Collection. Are you fucking kidding me? And then we get Wicked commercials through the whole thing. Yeah. No. I, 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 that movie, I was like, did it did it come out like six years ago? Like, we've been talking <laughs> about it. We've been talking about it for so long. Definitely it's already won 14 Oscars. Like, when is this movie ever coming out? And yeah. do you notice that they never even say anything about the movie? It's so weird. Like, they'll show previews and they just go like, Oh my God. Oh my God. And then that's it. Like the songs don't go together. They just throw a bunch of like random lines from songs. So it sounds like your your head's about to explode. And then they just show the witch going. And that's it. Who knows what this is about, except it's the green witch. Like, what did you see wicked? Yeah. Okay. Well, then you know what it's about. Well, right. But I'm just saying for a ton of commercials that have been going for months, how is anybody supposed to know what this is even about? Also, they've never said when it's coming out. November 22nd. Okay. So it's coming out soon. Yeah. But have they been talking about it since last November? Because I feel like they have. (laughs) It's been around a lot for sure. It's just like one of those people on TV. You're like, she's been pregnant for four years. Like, we is she an elephant? How has this person been pregnant for four years? (laughs) Um. Y'all, it's that time of year, the time that we need to start reflecting on things we're grateful for. I'm grateful for my family, my job, my friends, and my health. And another thing I'm grateful for, the fact that I've learned how to help my skin stay healthy and resilient as I get older. And that's because of today's sponsor, One Skin. Their scientifically proven skincare routine has made a noticeable difference in how my skin looks and feels. Their OS1 peptide works at the cellular level to switch off the dysfunctional cells that cause your skin to age faster than it needs to. And y'all know I'm going to go down fighting on this aging process. I've talked about it a lot. And to celebrate the holidays, One Skin has introduced their limited edition holiday bundle. This features travel sizes of the OS1 face, OS1 eye, and the OS1 body. All of these I've used, guys. They're all amazing products. And it comes in this chic, in the words of Jarit, this chic leatherette bag. It's the perfect gift, but you may actually just want to get one for yourself. Taking advantage of this exclusive bundle is short-lived. You got to do it while it lasts. And as a listener, you're going to get 15% off using code PINKSHADE when you check out at oneskin.co. Invest in your skin's long-term health this holiday season because healthy skin is a gift. So you guys, I've been using One Skin Topical Face and on my eyes for a couple of months now. I use it when my face is clean and right before I put on other products because it doesn't matter what other products you use. You just put this on first and then do your whole skincare routine that you like after that. And the R&D team at One Skin did a lot of research and like smart lady science things to create this next level of skincare. Their scientists found that the OS1 peptide reverses skin's biological age by reducing the number of these senescent cells by 50%. You guys see, it's all very smart and scientific. And I I don't know. All I know is it works for me and my skin has really seen improvement. One Skin is the world's first longevity company. One Skin addresses skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging so skin behaves, feels, and appears younger. It's time to get started with your new face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. Get 15% off with the code PINKSHADE at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co with the code PINKSHADE. And after you purchase, they'll say, hey, where'd you hear about us? Please support our show and tell them we sent you. We only have one body, one skin, and only one you, and you can choose to make it better. Age healthy with one skin. Um, so the Becca Minkoff and the Scientology thing. So she has now said more than once when they say about Scientology, she goes, I just say, read a book. Every time she says that, of course, my thought is going clear is the book you should read. Um, and I cannot believe the producer said that to her this week. Should we read going clear? She was like, not that book. I was like, well, technically, as a Scientologist, you're never supposed to go on the internet and type in anything about Scientologists. So how do you even know about that book? Ooh, you're in trouble. You got to go to Gold Base. You're in trouble. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I, you know, I like Rebecca for the most part. I like her personality. I love that she cannot be manipulated. She does not care about She's using the Scientology skills. <laughs> she does not care. Yeah, yeah. But... 
this whole promoting Scientology is gross. And when they give her that whole thing of like, just read a book. I just encourage anybody, read a book, see the musical. No, gross. Where's Shelly? Where is she? Where is and Shelly? stop this shit. Stop, stop trying to post it like it's your self-help. I used to live down the street from the science, one of the Scientology centers in Little Armenia. And I would see the, the low-level workers walking home every day in a single file line all the way from the church to their home, not speaking, their hands all folded right in front of them, wearing the exact same clothes, polyester pants, a gray little sweater, and like a little shirt. And they weren't allowed to talk, single file line too. And then they would all they would do is go there and come out. So while she's like, you know, this is just so great. Like it's just for my spirituality. Well, they don't look like they're doing too spiritual. <laughs> like they don't look like they're doing so great. So it might be great at your level, but just from what I've seen in passing, it's not great to the lower levels. And literally everything you read is terrifying about this. I don't love the whole giving that a platform. I think it's gross. And I think it's interesting too that she said she was explaining that she's Jewish, that's her religion, but Scientology she uses for like self-help and anything we've ever read or heard, you could listen to Leah Remini, you can listen to anybody. They have always said, no, it is not true. You are not a Baptist and also a Scientologist. Like it is, it does, that is not, that is not true because I know that when Katie Holmes was in and Tom Cruise was talking to Oprah or Matt Lauer or somebody about it. And he said, oh no, she's, yeah, her family is very Catholic. Um, Yeah, she's Catholic. But, you know, you could be Catholic and a Scientologist. And Leah Remini is like, that's hilarious. There is literally zero way you're allowed to affiliate with another religion. There's no way. They well, also in Catholicism. Like, I, everyone has kind of their own. Everyone's like, well, I'll just do whatever I want with my religion. And that's great. Like, everyone's sure. treating it kind of like a buffet <laughs> platter. But yeah. if you're really following those religions, Catholics aren't also Scientologists. That's just not what it is. That's not what Catholicism is. It's no. not what Christianity is. No. Even though some argue that Catholicism isn't the same as regular Christianity, but pretty sure. I mean, I went to Catholic school and I'm pretty sure that you're not allowed to just have multiple religions. You're not allowed to, you know, uh, worship false idols like Tom Cruise. Only mm -hmm. Lady Gaga, but she's a real idol. <laughs> so whatever. Oh my God. Well, I, I found that very interesting that they actually got her to talk about it. And then I'm like, now she will disappear and we'll be saying, where's Rebecca? And will her bags will live on forever at Nordstrom Rack or whatever. Oh, I think they're purposely getting her to do this PR shit for them where it's like, look, you know, we've had so much bad press, but it's just bad press. Look at this nice lady. And, you know, it's not bad advertising because really, if you look at Rebecca, she's doing great. <laughs> I mean, she's right. doing well, and her attitude is, like, perfect. Nothing bothers her. She's happy with everything at all times. Like, they mm -hmm. try to ruin her, and she's like, whatever. I'm not going to stoop to that level, but mm -hmm. it's cute that she's trying to. Never even confronts her about it. She's just like, whatever. Um, so it kind of makes it look like, well, that works. It's working for her, you know. But um, I'm not it's buying all... it, Ronnie. Yeah, don't buy it. It's just a ploy. It's just a ploy. Don't I'm buy it. Anyway. I'm not going to read Dianetics. You can't make me. <laughs> um. Okay, Salt Lake City, Um. the controversy this week. Well, first of all, thoughts on Bronwyn's cranky old man husband. Hilarious. I, I didn't like <laughs> it. I don't, I mean, I think it's funny. I think it's funny to a degree, but I don't like that whole like, we're behaving on this trip or these women are getting out of here. I will not be here for women fighting. Where do you think I, you are, sir? Why okay. did he well, agree? Work for you. Why did he agree to be on the show? Because a lot of times the husband's just barely dip in and out. And he could have been one of those guys, but he has like fully agreed to be on the show. And I don't know if that's like, you can't be a full housewife if your husband's not going to do it. And she bullied him into doing it. And now he's like, fuck this. I don't want to be on TV with these people fighting. It's bad for my brand. And he's just really bringing out the, like, I'm the dad in this situation. I don't know, but I don't like the way he speaks to her, but I do find his cranky personality pretty funny. Oh, I've, I mean, I laugh at it and I certainly laugh at it when we recap it, you know, cause we mm -hmm. really recap him as an old Methuselah type yes, <laughs> cranky old man. Yeah. So that's fun. But, um, I've, you know, I feel sadness with her. There's something sad about her. There's like something emanating from her. That's just not happy and fun. And she's dressed like she's really fun. And she's be wearing these big, huge cartoonish outfits. Like she's super fun. And she's not. And her house. And her house is like a Willy Wonka factory. Yeah, but she, it's like she's doing all of this to project how fun she is. But I just don't think she's fun. I'm sorry. I don't see it. And the whole thing with her husband makes me sad. She looks sad when he's talking like that. She looks like, you know, yeah, like yeah. he's Looking mad. And yeah. I, like I'm used to it. Everybody's used to him being mad. But 
that doesn't really excuse it. And it's like everybody's used to it and takes it because he's rich. He's a fucking billionaire or whatever. So everyone's like, that's just how he is. Poor people don't get away with that. If that was a poor husband acting like that on the show, people would be fucking horrified and calling him an emotional abuser. But he's really rich. So I guess that's okay. And I don't, I don't like it. And that whole like stand up for your wife. No, this show would be bedlam if it was just men standing up for their wives all the time. <laughs> these women, these women rip each other apart. And Bronwyn was part of that. Bronwyn that's right. was part of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh my God. I, uh, so something happened this week with Bronwyn and like a, is a blog, a blogger, a podcaster or something. And I guess that whoever that was like, like us, like talked Jenny about Blaze. her. Okay. Jenny Blaze. So talked about her on her, for whatever her format is. Well, and so what happened was here, I'll tell you the story. Okay, okay, so okay. basically the after show, you know, they have an after show for this. And there were kind of dueling stories. Bronwyn was in one section and Lisa was in another room. And they were telling the story about the grandparents and this and that. And Lisa was basically saying, I don't know what she's, this lady's talking about because they told the grandparents that the baby, that she'd miscarried. So the grandparents didn't even know there was this baby. Really? And, you know, there's all this. So Lisa's kind of standing up for the grandparents who are evil, right? Mm -hmm. So they ended up cutting that from the after show right after it aired. But Jenny Blaze, Bravo and Blaze, hey girl, Jenny had video of it. So she put it up and she said, here's what they cut from oh. this from the episode. Okay. And Bronwyn had a fit and <laughs> was emailing her like, this is hurting my daughter and this is, mm -hmm. you know, all this, which I don't really doubt it, but you're also putting the story onto TV. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know, but it got really ugly. And then, you know, of course, Jenny's <laughs> kind of typical blogger about it. Like, and she's attacking me, you know. But, you know, it's it's gotten a little bit messy. But that's what I understand of the story. Okay. And then now Bravo has said, like, okay, Salt Lake City, you're shut down. Like, you know, no press, no interviews, no nothing. Like, they do that sometimes. If something gets a little spicy, they'll be like, okay, so nobody can do press. You know, no, and have they, they done that? Yeah, they did that. And they, they'll do that for like two weeks. I remember I had an interview scheduled with Margaret a while back and um, was so excited. Da, 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 and then like a week before, like, yeah, they shut that shit down. And then I was like, well, for how long? And they're like, till exactly six weeks after the reunion of Jersey. I was like, what? Nobody will care then. And then a week yeah. later, they're like, just kidding. It's lifted. You can talk to her. Like, yeah, they they do they do have a bizarre way of dealing with things over there, and I kind of get it. But at the same time, Salt Lake is kind of tanking, and you need the ratings. So, and you need the, <laughs> if you've got controversy, get their asses out there to talk about it. You know. Yeah, and I think overall the season kind of like not not too too much is happening. I did want to see um, John Barlow and uh, Whitney's husband. I I'd love to have seen them just duke it out. Uh, I would have loved that, but it didn't happen. To duke it out. Yeah. No way. It's mm -hmm. wusses. No way. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I think that show's so funny. And if they make me laugh, then I'm in. And it makes me laugh every single time. So I'm into it, you know. But um, I just, I don't know. I hope people start watching it because I think that one's so good. I'm watching it, it every just, week. I'm watching it yeah. like I got it on my DVR. I'm doing it like a like real, not even streaming. Really yeah, me too. Anymore. I love it. So we'll see. <sighs> okay, Potomac. I know you guys love Potomac. Um, yeah. Okay. So this last episode was kind of uh, now. Do we know if Mia was actually ever in rehab for a heroin problem, or did Karen just make that up as a diversion? I don't know. But it's um, pretty, it's, pretty <laughs> gross to say. It's pretty low. Yeah. Uh, but Mia is also so low constantly mm -hmm. that they're both kind of going low. And I just. I guess what kind of made it funny to me, even though it was so low, and I know I sound like a hypocrite because in the other, on OC, I'm like, fuck Heather and Emily, that was so <laughs> low. And on this, I'm like, LOL. But yeah. it was low, but I think it's just the way that Karen is just like so sick of being attacked every episode that she's like, well, she's, you know, she had an opioid addiction. The end, go do with that what you will. Children. That's why okay. she started the joint chiropractic. I'm like, so you have an opioid addiction, so you buy a franchise of a chiropractor? What? Well, someone explained to me in the comments, because that's what I was saying. Like, yeah. I don't get, like, why, how does that make sense? You know, is it because it has, like, crack in the title, like, crack the back? Even though it's not yeah. an opioid. But I was trying to figure out. But someone in the comments was like, Ronnie, it's probably because she w had an opioid addiction because of a pain pill problem. Okay. And then chiropractor got her off of that because they helped deal with her pain in a non-drug way. Non-drug okay. 
Right. What do you call it? Dependent way. Yeah, so that okay. made sense. They haven't said that on the show, but I did read it in a YouTube comment. And so I that say, be, thank you. That's so the true. most education I've had this week. You know, That must be true. Um, so I will say that I looked up, because uh, they keep talking about, you know, Karen can't say anything. Karen can't say anything. So I looked it up. And in October, she did ask for her charges to be dismissed, the all 412 charges. And it was denied. Because what she what she said to the court was um, some of the statements that she made when she was first like taken out of the car and breathalyzed and with the uh, EMTs, all of that is admissible in court. And she was asking for all of that not to be admissible because she wasn't read her rights. And what the court said was, no, they don't have to read you your rights. You just stepped out of the car and we're talking to an EMT. They don't have to read you your rights. You, you were volunteering information. So she's probably like, oh, yeah, I'm shit faced. I hit that tree. I couldn't believe it. I mean, whatever she was saying. <laughs> right. You weren't under arrest. So they didn't she, have to read. They you didn't your have rights. to read you your rights. And so anyway, the court, she was asking for all that to be thrown out in her case. And the court, like they were like, it was like a 20 minute hearing. And they're like, Shh, denied. No. Oh, and she was saying, oh, they've mistreated me because yeah. let me tell you what happened. They started questioning me. Horrible, horrible questions. Where were you tonight? What were you doing tonight? I was like, girl, that's what they tell all of us when we get pulled over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like a, yeah. the standard question. She's like, how many it's drinks, have you, how many drinks have you had tonight? You know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, oh, anyway, man. denied. So that's still ongoing. Yeah. Um, now. I think she's the, actually getting it kind of easy on that show. Really? I mean, they're not pounding her with like the they did with Shannon. Drunk. Yeah. They're not, I mean, they they had a little party. They made some shady jokes, but I mean, they're not coming after her that hard. I don't think. Okay, that watch what happens live with Stacy and Countess Luann. First of all, Stacy, I was like, whoa, girl, pull your dress up. I was like, her tata. I was like, whoa. And I like well, Stacy. She's a stunner. I wanted her just to start singing, why don't you do right? She was like <laughs> Jessica Rabbit up there. I mean, gorgeous. I was like, she's wow. gorgeous. And I'm a gay guy. I was like, holy mother, that lady's gorgeous. Um, it was a little much with the boobage for me. And then there was um Boobs are in. You oh, and okay. I got mine out half the time, <laughs> you know? Luann, did she seem a little off to you? On that episode? She actually seems somewhat lucid comparatively. I mean, um, I don't know. Luann's such a nutcase. <laughs> Just bring every single thing. It's like, so you like the weather today? Well, in my cabaret song, I do a song called Stormy Weather. It's like, all right. It's, it's all the cabarets. The, the only answer in life is cabaret. You know? It's really annoying. And I heard her, you know, <laughs> maybe in the last month or so, she was doing like a round of like she was doing Jeff Lewis. She did Heather. She did, you know, she did Kate Casey. She did a bunch of podcasts. And she did crappens. Ding. She did. She did crappens. Yeah. Oh my she god! Just, I, she just went. You know, you just had to sit there and listen to her go. But she, <laughs> it's very hard to keep her on topic. Like you literally can't be like, so you like, what's going on with your kids? She's like, well, you know, my children always say, "Mom, you're a cabaret star," and you're like, wait a minute, that's not the <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she answers nothing. She just brings it all. It's that's it's hard. It's hard to keep her on point. Uh, yeah, I don't think with someone like that, you keep them on point. You just let them go. You know, you just have to know when to cut them off enough when they're getting boring. Because she will just keep going like a politician, you know, yes. until her time's up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, anyway, I thought that was interesting because, like, she was having a hard time turning her neck. So I was, did you notice that? Like, if she was turning, she was like, she'd had a neck injury, but I think she had had, like, some threads or something. Because you see that oh. people have threads that they can't. Of course, then I'm like, should I get threads? Um Okay, on Crappens, you guys are covering, of course, all the housewives. Uh huh. Sometimes you do HGTV. You're doing the Below Deck. What else are you covering? I mean, that's everything. Uh, right now, we do Below Deck, and then we do uh, House Hunters for our Wondery Plus, like exclusive so things. Yes, Thanks. I'm, I'm a fun. subscriber. I'm a subscriber. Oh, thank you. So that's <laughs> super fun. That's different. And then we did uh, Chimp Crazy recently, the HBO thing. And we did The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. That was okay. interesting. It was fun. Yeah. So we'll branch out, you know, when we when we need to, like when there's holes in the schedule or whatever. But then yeah. a ton of stuff comes back and then we're having to skip stuff, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. That's not to happen where we're going to just have to start skipping some stuff. So who knows? You know, it's feast or famine over here. But Are you going to cover um, Sold in the OC? Yes, I'm going to cover it too. I think, I think just because it, I'm, it does look good. And I'm sort of like, I'm very in that Salt Lake city. You know, we're just, we're just inundated with the Mormons inundated with the Mormons. And I say, bring them on, bring them on. Yeah. There's another cult that we're just like, Oh, it's okay now. Cause it's on Bravo. 
That's, that's all great. I mean, yeah. are they trying to convince us it's the worst thing in the world? Because Salt Lake City has not had a very positive review of Mormonism, right? With Heather yeah. and Whitney and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the same time, they're like, hey, let's, let's have more Mormons everywhere. Mormons everywhere. So I'm <laughs> really sure that, uh, you know, I'm with it. And it looks fun. I love to take detours. Well, I love when Bravo gives us just something new and crazy and cheesy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Southern Charm is coming back. Beverly Hills is coming back. But then I guess OC will leave. But I don't feel like any of those other three are leaving right away. No, and Married to Medicine is coming back, too. So oh, there's a ton of stuff that's going to be on. And it's are... all coming on right before Christmas, which is really annoying because. Annoying. Yeah. What are you going to do? Not do. I mean, you know. You take a to... week. Like we're not going to work during Christmas week for that, you know. But I take yeah. it personally. It's like it has nothing to do with me. But I'm like, how dare you? How dare you mess with my Christmas break? I know. Well, I don't like that for you. Now you have. <sighs> we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. But quickly, I want to ask you. So you you moved from L.A. back to Texas, and now you're back in L.A. I'm both. You're I'm both. Part, yeah, I'm both in part time. So this place in L.A. I want as an investment type thing it was a fixer-upper so i'm trying my hand at that yeah and i'm kind of a disaster i'm not gonna lie well from what i can <laughs> see definitely it my cute. first yeah. time <laughs> yeah thank you but like budget and stay you know it's oh yeah nuts um and then also i'm building it so like who's gonna want to live here besides me it's like a whole room made out of cork like who wants that me literally well, just me or know? somebody that wants to do a <laughs> podcast or a murder yeah. Yes. Well, the roof is actually, the ceiling in here is actually maroon. I, I can't tilt my camera up because it's okay. so fixed that it looks like a, a crime scene. But yeah, I'm Perfect. having fun. And then I'm, I'm going back to Texas in a couple of weeks and I'll probably, you know, rent this place out or something. We'll see. And you still have your place in Texas though? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What, uh, what does Bueller think about the traveling? Your dog? He loves it. He does loves he, it. Do you guys, yeah. do you drive or do you fly? He has, uh, there's like a courier service that takes him because he's really hard to get on planes. They've really cracked down on that whole emotional support animal. So I just sobbed the whole time to prove that I really needed him. You know, I'm like, how dare you? And not yeah. peanuts either. All these wusses took away peanuts. <laughs> my, that man a dog. my niece and her husband have a, I don't know, 70 pound golden doodle that they take with them on the airplane. And the dog just sits between their legs on the floor and never moves, never nothing. I have too many golden doodles that would have to be half euthanized to go on an airplane. There's, I mean, there's no way they 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 can't even. No, they get they panic if they have to go on the ferry when we go to the beach. Like, oh my gosh! So Bueller would be okay on an airplane. Yeah, he's great on airplanes. Yeah, ah. he's just not small enough to where he fits the right way to be legal. Like he's a little too big. Like he can fit under yeah. the seat, but his butt sticks out and his tail wags the whole time. And That's slaps cute people. though. And he can't fit in a little crate that goes under there. And I'm yeah. not putting him under the plane thing because that's no, not no, cool. no, 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 um, no. I did that once with my first dog, and she was traumatized for life. She yeah, came out of there like, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> like awful. it was not oh. good. Yeah, so I've never gotten over that guilt. So I'm not going to do that. But there's like a little courier service that takes him. So okay, let Bueller fly. That's what yeah. I said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I say too. Give Bueller a break. He's a good boy. Yeah. That's like I said, my the huge, huge dog that my niece has just sits like sits between her legs on the plane. I was like, well, we gotta push our backpack under. Okay. But some people just have a way of getting away with it. You know, Leah Black, the real housewives yeah. of Miami Leah, she's like, Oh, I brought my dogs. She's got like three or four dogs. One of them's humongous. And she's like, I brought him in first class. You know, she just brings him in there and just piles him in there and just sits with them. One of them pooped all over the first class one time. And she's just, no. I'm like, how do you get away? And of course the answer, money, 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 money. I mean, I'm guessing, but I don't feel like I could pull, pull that off. But she's got that kind of personality where they just are like, okay, okay, ma'am, whatever you need. I feel like if a dog pooped on the plane, you'd have to like take the plane down. Like you'd have to be like, we're going to have to land to St. Louis. Like, you know. I don't know. I don't Not if you're Leah Black. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Keep this plane in the air. Like, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you guys already know, but I'll just tell you the best Bravo podcast out there is Watch What Crappens and has been for how many years? Oh, well, thank you. Uh, almost 13. Jeez. The New Year's will be 13 years old. Isn't that crazy? And you guys won that big podcast award this year. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the iHeartRadio. Wow. I heart, I heart. Okay. Yeah, I loved that was it. So nice. I loved it. That was really great. It only cost God. How much was that? I'm just kidding. A couple <laughs> of blowjobs and 
<laughs> do, do, you have the, do you have the award itself? I do. Yeah, okay. it's in Texas. Okay. Well, you need to like put it behind you on your little <laughs> cork shelf back there and be like, okay. look, who, look who you're talking to, motherfucker. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's been so fun talking to you. I love talking to you. But yeah, just find us on Instagram at Watch What Crappens, and I'm at Ronnie Karam. That's right. And that's where you find them. And you can listen anywhere you want. And then also they're on Wondery and you get it there ad free. That's where I listen. I love it. Yes, mm. Wondery supporter. Well, thank you so much, honey. It was great talking to you. Okay. Everybody follow me on Instagram at Pink Shade Pod. And I'll be around this weekend with Amy talking about the season finale of 90 Day the Other Way. Love it. Love it. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>